So the whole endeavor here in this presentation series and the purpose of which will be explained in the end of why this whole thing is there. So just be patient, go through this whole presentation and then we'll move forward with the other presentations. So part one, the basis, exposition of human spirit in being and in action. Now, what does this mean and why? Okay, that will be explained towards the end. But as a beginning point, uh, there are two things I want you to bear in mind as we go forward. None of what I say here is final. There is no finality. None of this is aligned or with any belief systems or any, any forms of knowledge or anything like that, although it will be using the premise of the existing human knowledge as a starting point. There is no ending point. There is a starting point. It's up to you who have come here to see what makes sense, what does not make sense, because this is considering a basis which is universal to all of us as humans. And we have to evolve this, considering what's going on in the civilization right now, we need to evolve new forms, we need to develop new new ways of integrating with one another as academia, as experienced professionals, as youth and students. Because knowledge is where it has all got to come from. Um, so this is a collaborative platform uh, developed for the purpose of education and research. Collaborative education and research is that's why it's called. Um, so I'm just putting forward some ideas. Uh, none of this is final. Uh, and I urge you to look at the message, not the messengers. The message can come through various humans as we know it has come through different humans from different places on the planet uh, it is all part of one universal consciousness that we draw different messages from so this is a there's a universality to this it's no specifics it's an open-ended platform with that in mind let's begin and let's see uh, what what's the basis of this Exposition of human spirit in being and in action. Now, what does this mean? Okay, let's talk about basic tenets of human spirit in being. <clears throat> now, what do I mean by that? Okay, so what do you mean by being? Um, to summarize, without getting too many too much into um, sort of esoterics, I will just summarize this. The being, as is being referred to here, is the sum total of all the experiences, the receiver of all your experiences. Your five senses, your thoughts, feelings, emotions, your human consciousness, which is the center of all the reception, of all the knowledge, all the knowledge, when I say knowledge, I just don't mean bookish knowledge, all the sensory perceptions, all the thoughts, all your propensities, all your psychology, all your um, emotional chaos, emotional alignments, everything that's going on inside you as you get up from day to day, as you move from one um, one moment to the other, from the time you get up in the morning to the time you go to bed, that's the living that you participate in, yes? Um, and goes on throughout your life. So this is working from that level. This being that is you is comprised of this, all of this. It comprises of compassion, comprises of love, balance, knowledge, understanding and beauty. The human being is... Um, is working with all of these all of the time yes so <clears throat> when we speak of being we are going to spend some time now cross correlating all of these basic these are not virtues don't confuse this with virtues or values or what you think love is what you think compassion is it's not thought it's not thinking it's being that's the big difference okay so what is what are you being in this in every moment of every day throughout your life your being works from these levels this is the nature of your being it looks to find inside itself and in the external world all of these things 
because you are there and there's the external world. So you are always looking for combining all parts of this because this is the nature of you. When something is inherent, the core, the core of your being is comprising of all of this. That's where you're working from. <clears throat> and so it's not, uh, it's not linear. Uh, it's not one thing or the other. It's sometimes related to one another. One can overlap one another. Compassion can lead to balance, can lead to knowledge, can lead to new understanding, can lead to production of beauty, creation of beauty. It can lead to love. It can lead to, again, compassion. Knowledge can lead to love, not just the other way around. You know, it can happen anyway. Uh, so these are all in a circle, as in they are all in a bunch, as one collective energy soup, which is your being. Okay, and you're working from all of those levels all of the time. This is not a. This is not something that you do once, or you you get up in the morning and one day you are compassion, next day you are just knowledge, third day you are just understanding. Everything is wrapped up as one single soup where you can't separate any of these saying at any time you're feeling only one one is always contributing to the next and to one or more of all of those even uh, and you're striving always continuously the being in you is striving to externalize this and internalize this always. It goes both ways, in to out, out to in, in to out, out to in. This is the pulse of creation that you are always engaged in. You're, you're vibrating in this pulse. The being is vibrating with the, with the earth, with other human beings, with the, with the planet itself, in all these uh, outward and inward pulse of growing, continuous growth and expansion. That's what the being seeks. And it seeks it with this as the core nature of itself. Like I said, this can be very, very complex. It's not linear, it's circular. It's got so many interrelated things. We will discuss this as we go forward in the other chapters. For now, we are summarizing some things. We'll just go forward and we will... Um, <clears throat> We'll see how this all thing relates, ties to one another later. Next, we come to the point of basic tenets of human spirit in action. So, one is the spirit in being, which we saw is the nature. Second, we see the human spirit in action, like what the human spirit is here to create. So, it is here to create, it is here to engage, it's here to regenerate, it's here to expand. These four are the action actionable items, action things that you as a human being but in spirit carry out in action. You create. Everything is about creation. You create. And again, this can be in a circle. There is no linearity anywhere here in whatever I'm speaking. One can lead to the other. The creation can lead to engagement, can lead to regeneration, can lead to expansion. Expansion can lead to more creation. Creation can lead to more regeneration and more engagement, it can be any way. And all of the actions lead to one another in a circular fashion. It's not It's not even going in one direction. It's not always like, don't think in terms of creation will lead to engagement, engagement will lead to regenerate, regenerate will lead to expand. All of those in a circle, again, we will expand this more as focused chapters in other videos. Yeah. <coughs> So just to summarize here, what is create? Create is your <clears throat> your innate urge of your being, uh, as we discussed in the previous slide, to create something. Your greatest joys and your your greatest love is found in creation. You creating something, you bringing something out of you into the external. That provides you the feedback of joy. That's the creation factor. Engage. What is what is meant by engage? Now, creation can be done in isolation or creation... Well, creation is always done in isolation. One always creates individually. One doesn't create collectively. It's an individual exercise. But when you say engagement, you're engaging with, with what? With the collective. With the collective of humans, with the collective of the planet and everything that's on the planet. You're engaging. You're 
you are interacting with one another you are sharing ideas discussions you are creating new inventions you are creating new forms of knowledge you are new forms of emotion new forms of connections you make with one another as communities as countries as you know you are engaging all the time that's the engagement so creation is individual engagement is collective one to many many to one both ways again regenerate now what does regenerate mean regeneration is the aspect of you which wants to again it can be done individually and collectively and both at the same time and as in the sense individually regeneration can be the well, random example i can think of is when you rest at night you are regenerating every human being needs to regenerate it means every human being needs to rest uh, go within um, sleeping is the best form of meditation which everybody uh, does every night you don't need to have to sit in a yoga posture for the sake of regeneration you can you are regenerating your body will force you to regenerate you have to sleep that's a form of meditation so there you go so regenerate is that part of you which wants to as a self go back assimilate all the knowledge all the understandings that you have gathered in your everyday experience and regenerate at night that's one form another form of regeneration with the collective can be in saying okay let's go back to the drawing board this is not working out for us we need to evolve a new form of thought a new form of knowledge it may be in economics it may be in science it can be in in any field of human knowledge it can be in forms of governance it can be in forms of economy <clears throat> it can be in many many forms but uh, yeah that is regeneration of ideas regeneration of thought process emotional process psychological process governance process economics process all fields of human knowledge process it can be regeneration of that that's the regeneration part expansion expand last part bullet what is expansion well the human spirit seeks to constantly evolve in in all directions again this is circular um, spherical really not even circular it's spherical it's inward to outward and the entire human race which is here seeks to expand expand in what expand it can expand in creation it can expand in engagement it can expand in regeneration it can expand in uh, the beingness is that we talked about in the previous in nature of your being it can expand in love it can expand in compassion it can expand in knowledge it can expand in creation of beauty it can expand in creation of different kinds of knowledge be it whatever it is so this is the expansion factor so you engage in action using these four again everything is interrelated it's not lateral it's not linear it's all spherical and it's all can lead to one another at any given moment throughout your life this part will summarize uh, the circle of human spirit why i call the circle well you can call it even a sphere really because it's it's we were taking talking of a three dimensional four dimensional and multi dimensional approach here you know talking linear there is nothing linear in whatever is being said here all are interrelated uh but what the what the seeking is to accomplish what are we trying to accomplish here has to be clearly spelled out so this diagram kind of very weakly if i may say is kind of summarizing uh, what needs to be done you may read them out for you so we have the four circles the four circles of uh, creation engagement regeneration and expansion which are all overlapping with your core being which is compassion love balance understanding knowledge and beauty so what are the two bullets we are talking about there actions must only seek to engage human spirit the human spirit that's why it is all actions are revolving and centered around increasing and expanding the main spirit okay this is what we should start from this is what we should restart the civilization well it's not civilization really right now it's barbaric but um, we need to build a new one so let's talk about building right building from a new place so 
first is actions must only seek to enhance human spirit right? second point human spirit always seeks to be engaged in every action so it goes this way inward to outward also right it goes from every place so it goes from inward to outward the outward is always seeking to enhance more of the inward this is the human being this is what we are here to do each and every one on this planet all seven billion of them are doing that in their own way in their own place in their own time with whatever they have all the means that they have at their disposal all the societies that they live in all the cultures that they come from they all seek to do this all the time now this particular one only summarizes what we just spoke of the relationship from human action to human being and what I suggest is you use, create, engage, regenerate and expand <clears throat> only to enhance compassion, love, balance, knowledge and understanding. That's the way you do it. If you do it that way, it will become a very symbiotic, synthetic, beautiful relationship between human beings everywhere, be it individuals, families, countries, societies, states, I don't care. It's going to become beautiful. The civilization is going to become truly a civilization. And um, what else was I going to say? Yeah, so use, use the actions which you are always prompted and always engaged in to enhance compassion, love, balance, knowledge, understanding and beauty. That's what we are here to do throughout our lives, every day as we wake up in the morning till the time we go to bed. Now here is where, where it gets really tricky. If you've been told lies, a lot of them, and lots of them are floating around the internet, you can go and research them yourself. But the lie we are focusing here now is how it's affecting your personal life, how it's relating to destruction of human spirit and why the civilization is in such chaos and such, uh, such a mess, right? Okay, so the lie we are told is you need to have money, you need to have a job, a career, relationships, success, social status and good health. And that leads to happiness, satisfaction, pride, contentment, well-being, acceptance and long life. This is the lie we are told. There is a lie going on which is being propagated through millenniums and centuries through all kinds of civilization. Building hierarchies of structure, of government, of power, of authority, of of low forms of consciousness of governance, holding people hostage, and on and on and on it goes. So, first thing is to understand the lies. This is these are all the lies we are told. Like this is the one which you lead to. This is the path. Now there is, as you can see, this is all linear thinking, and it has limited. Um, scope of growth and it doesn't contribute to human being in spirit and action as we spoke of. Obviously, this is completely out of truth. Now, let's see how the next one comes along, right? What is the real truth? Well, the real truth is compassion, love, balance, knowledge, understanding and beauty through human actions of creation, engagement, regeneration and expansion results in joy of being alive every day if you're happy to be just alive how many of you get up every day morning just waiting to get on with stuff and do things see that's not what we are collectively created it's time to change that so joy of being alive it creates peace inside it creates camaraderie between people it creates cooperation and collaboration between people it creates gratitude inside being grateful for your life, being grateful to the people you have in your life, your family, your neighbors, your friends, your colleagues, your everyone, right? And it creates a sense of service. Because of joy of being alive is there, because of this peace, this camaraderie, gratitude, you want to be of service automatically. It's not somebody has to force you around to go to the office or business to make some money for, for God knows what. So you have become being of service because you're content and peaceful within yourself you're happy to be just alive and that creates humility and that creates wellness do you see the energy of this this is completely different to what we have been told all our life so we need to create the new civilization which is based on truth that is real separate out what is too real from what is bullshit okay excuse my language but that's the truth and the whole world is saying it now. 
So we need to create something different from a different basis, from a different point. It's not just a point of view, it's not just an opinion. This is the truth that is real. Okay. Okay, so this subject is a little more, well, for lack of better words, unorthodox because it has never been taught like this in our curriculums, in modern education anyway. And this has to be the one of the basis for the new evolution of the earth, okay, and all the planet um, and all the peoples on the planet. So the only place where this was existent on the planet till now was in the indigenous people of the planet, the natives, right? The indigenous peoples of the planet knew this circle of symbiosis called Earth and they worked with it in their own ways, in their own wisdom and knowledge, right? And so what is this? What am I describing here? The symbiotic synthetic circle called Earth. Now we live in a closed system. Earth is a closed system comprising of those three parts which are shown there. Human beings, individuals, family, state, countries, the earth, the elemental, soil, water, air, minerals, etc. And all the life forms, flora and fauna, everything, right from the smallest and tiniest of virus, bacteria, anything, right up till the mammals. And all the creatures in between, life forms on the sea, in the inside the earth, uh, all kinds of life forms. Okay, that's why I put it as a generic thing. Um, so all kinds of life forms are there. So what is the basis we need to establish here for making a new civilization? Symbiosis is the self-sustaining cycle of all life on earth. Symbiosis is biology existing one to another, the food chain and everything else that we are taught, right? There's a part of it. It's just one part of it. There's another called synthesis, which is missed out and which is unacknowledged in modern science is the making of elementals within all symbiotic beings. So what are our bodies made up of? Everything that we are made up of is from the elementals of the earth. The soil, the water, the air, the minerals, etc. Even the tiniest of bacteria is made of that. Even the virus is made of that. Everything is made of this. Earth itself, everything on earth is made of something off the earth. This is not acknowledged and that's the part of synthesis we are talking about. More details in more videos, it's too detailed. Um, human spirit in actions, which is spoke of, should engage, must engage with other counterparts, as in human beings, with all the ones which you spoke of, with the being and action, should engage with earth elementals, should engage with other life forms, so that it creates a symbiotic, synthetic relationship the first two bullets there. With earth elementals and all of the life forms in a symbiotic way, with all the elementals of a planet in a synthetic way. This is, this is the true sustenance we speak of, which is spoken of a lot in all kinds of circles, but nobody really has any clue how to go about this. Well, ask the indigenous. They used to work with the elementals. They used to work with earth and the life forms. And they sustained themselves for millenniums together without a, without a scratch. Without any assistance from any modern... Uh, sciences, see, we need to get back the wisdom of the indigenous, but build it with our modern knowledge also. So both symbiosis and synthesis is only achieved when humans act with their true being and actions shown in previous lives, right? How can we achieve a sustainable long planet? How can we achieve balance? How can we get rid of the... Uh, excessive carbon emissions. How do we do this? How do we do that? Well, you've got to change the basis first. You can't keep having cars, manufacturing cars and keep and having factories which pollute the the air and the ocean and the rivers. You're not in symbiosis and proper relationship with Earth. You're not building based on the proper principles. See? You can all tie it on now. You can tie it to one another. Right? So this is a this will be further explained in further videos. Now we come to part two. Part two is re-engineering the new human. It's obvious we have to re-engineer the new human. It's obvious now with whatever is going on in the world, we need to build a new civilization from scratch. All of this shit which happened is not working for any one of us. Excuse the language. So we need to build a new one, new civilization. 
but it starts with building the new human first. So, what are the qualities that we need to do? What are the, what are the things that we need to do? Okay. So, the new progressive human in thought, emotion, and action, because this is where we work from on a daily basis. Thought, emotion, and action. Right? So, let's see what that comprises of. So, building a progressive human mind. When you come to thought, what does it call for? What are we looking at when you talk of the human mind, really? You can talk of all the collective knowledge that has been accumulated regarding the human mind in the in all the collected knowledge so far, right? From Freudian psychology to everything else. But it all can be summarized in these bullets. It's developing a self-reflective mind. It's a mind that can reflect on itself and understand what's going on. You can do this with self-analysis, with yoga, with meditation, with self-awareness, with self-help. All this self-directed, self-reflective mind needs to be developed. That's one. A mind should not be randomly going out without reflecting on itself what it is doing. Otherwise, it will not be in harmony with the being of itself. Forget the rest of the world. With itself, it will be in conflict with itself in its true nature. Okay. Again, very detailed. All are circular. All these bullets are not linear. There is no order of hierarchy here. There are no hierarchies in any of these presentations. Accumulation of a well-rounded knowledge without preferences. Now, why have I said that? A well-rounded knowledge means... And a biologist can't just be a biologist. He needs to know mathematics. A doctor needs to know something what the engineer is doing. An engineer needs to know what a doctor is doing or what a psychologist is doing or what the art and literature and physics and everybody else is doing. You need to have a well-rounded knowledge that will contribute and without preferences. What I mean by without preferences, meaning you should not be stuck in your own individual thing saying, I'm going to only study this and ignore everything else. Well, look at where it has got us. You know, we have specialists of all kinds, but they are only stuck in their little boxes. The human is not built to be in a box. The human is built in a spherical manner. Like we already discussed, they are built to expand. Expansion should be in all directions without preferences, personal preferences. Stop the personal preferential understanding of knowledge and getting into your little tiny box and thinking that I'm only only think physics or only think literature or only keep painting all my life. You need to know everything else. And it, you might not do a PhD in everything, but well, you need to know. So expand your knowledge without a well-rounded knowledge, without preferences. That's the second point. Third one, Deploying both synthesis and analysis. Now, synthesis is the science of combining things. Analysis is the science of analyzing by breaking apart. So, these are two, two opposite forces. One is going, combining everything. One is dissecting everything. Both these tools are needed. It's not one or the other. It's both are needed. Science is developed with analysis. Science, we need to develop more synthesis also. The modern science, in all its various fields focuses more on analyzing stuff dissecting stuff but we need to know how to combine stuff how things are related on an overview how to integrate have an integrated model how economics will affect biology how biology will affect engineering how engineering will affect chemistry and you know it it is it is not linear it is circular it synthesis is a circular approach we need to approach we need to deploy both Analysis and synthesis, not just analysis. That's the third. <clears throat> Developing critical thought and integrative approach. Again, this ties to the previous one. Critical thought is minus any preconceived notions. Or, well, you can have a preconceived notion or you can have a preconceived belief or what you feel is right or what is wrong. But critical thought is examining with respect to what is playing out now. Is it working? Is it not working? Minus the whatever my thinking is, minus whatever my conditioning is or where my education is, is it working to fulfill the basic nature of my being or not? That is critical thinking. And having an integrative approach, meaning always have an approach of unifying everything, unifying, uh, bridging the gap across cultures, individuals, families, countries, states, 
the earth, all beings upon it, the elementals, everything. This is an integrative approach. Whether one thing is affecting anything else in a negative way, you don't go that direction. You change the approach. Well, this is not working there. So let's re-examine. Get back to the drawing board. Next one is thinking outside the the box of culture, country and faith. We need to get rid of this. No boundaries, no culture, no faiths. We, we need to think outside these little boxes that we have tied ourselves in. That's what's led to all the conflict, all the strife, all the wars, all the bloodshed, all the hatred, violence, you name it, everything else, all low consciousness. We need to get rid of that if we need to build something new. And if we need to be in line with the previous slides which we spoke of, which is regarding the human being in spirit and the human being in action. Right? We need to do that. And last is the service, a continuous creative engagement. When we say service, it is not being of serve, being subservient to any government, institution, faith, or religion, or anything. Forget the old ideas of service. What I mean here by service is a continuous creative engagement. You are being really service to yourself to begin with, with all the being that you are, with all the actions that you produce. You are being in service to yourself and service to others only if you are in a continuous creative engagement. Remember all those things we spoke of, human and being in action and creation? Right. So you have to be in continuous creative engagement with yourself and with others. Be it your family, your country, your anything. Right. So these are the things you need to bear in mind. Now, what is building a progressive human emotion? We need to build emotion. We thought of thought. We spoke of thought, emotion, and action. Right? So, okay. This is the second part. How to build a progressive human emotion? Well, here are the bullets. Objective observations of one's own emotional states. If you're feeling angry, you're feeling sad, you're feeling hatred, you're feeling jealousy, you're feeling anything that's going on inside of you emotionally, you have an emotional body. So, whatever is going on, observe it objectively as if you are observing another person. But it's you. You are observing. You have a power of observation, every human has, whom they can watch themselves and their own emotions objectively. This is needed. Before you go around telling this one is responsible for that emotion, this one is making me angry, that one is making me fat, this thing is making me jealous, stand back, observe your own emotions objectively. What is going on inside me? That's needed first. Second, what is needed is a situational empathy. This is being talked about a lot in emotional intelligence and everything. Empathy. Empathy is the natural quality we have where we can understand or we empathize with another human being. Sadness or happiness. Or we feel happy when others are feeling happy. We feel sad when others are feeling sad. If somebody is angry at us, we get angry back at them. Humans keep reflecting emotions of one another. But we need to have situational empathy. Now, what does this mean? Meaning, if a person is angry at something and he's just lashing out at you for something that's going on with them, but it's nothing to do with you. I'm just giving an example here. So you have situational empathy. That means you you tune your empathy to fit the situation. It's always dynamic. It's not constant throughout any situation in one's life. Even in any, any game, even in half a day, you will have a different things right going on. So situational empathy means tune your empathy to match the situation. Sometimes if an angry person, I'm giving an example again, is angry at you, you can just be silent, say nothing, and that would be most empathic to the situation. It's like saying to the other person, I understand what you're going through, however, it has nothing to do with me. I understand you're having a bad day, I feel sorry for you, but I'm not going to participate in this. This has nothing to do with me. That is situational empathy. It's very different from just empathizing blindly and you end up getting angry at the same time. So, that's a detailed one. So, next one is cross-cultural emotional preferences. Understanding the human family. Now, I've been to about 15 to 18 countries now, worldwide so far, on my work as an engineer and worked with many different cultures, races, right from Japanese, Korean to Americans to to French, to Spanish, to you name it. I've been worked with many, many cultures, including the Middle Eastern countries, everything. So, um, 
cross culture and emotional preferences what does this mean emotional preferences are specific to cultures if you go to india you find people having different emotional preferences if you go to america you find different ones if you go to japan completely different what they have preferences for emotional preferences are based upon culture so we need to have an understanding this is the human being one of the qualities of the human in being which we spoke of it says understanding so you need to understand the human family that is there different races different preferences different cultures so they have different emotions about different things we need to have an understanding of it uh next one is compassionate action now this compassionate action comes from the human beings core value core sorry not core value the core energy of being which is compassion and you have to have an action translatable to that you you need to show compassion in action one of the four actions that humans take right we spoke of creation engagement and all that so we need to take action on that that will build a positive human emotion if you take compassionate action the last one is indulgence in creation of beauty joy peace and expansion this will build a good human emotion emotional bank so to speak so indulgence if you indulge yourself in creation of beauty anything that gives you be- produces beauty and shows it to another human being another thing which produces joy or peace or expansion you have to indulge in these this will bring a good well balanced well rounded human emotional state the third part of it building a progressive human action what does it mean bridging experiences knowledge wisdom between generations now this is one of the attempts of this um this uh, collaborative education and research exercise Uh, that i endeavor to put forward to you bridging experience now we have lots of people who are older generation who have experienced not only knowledge but who have experienced wisdom life experiences practical difficulties of knowledge practical dif- difficulties of life and everything which gains wisdom wisdom cannot be bought in in a classroom or in any study settings it has to be earned through life experience which is there with the elderly generation all the experienced academia professionals who are already present and then there's the youth which has all the energy and has a brain like a sponge bob so they need to take in all this wisdom learn appreciate and use that wisdom so we need to bridge the bridging this experience of knowledge and wisdom between different generations that will create progressive human action next bridging human to the planet human actions with earth sciences we spoke of this how it is related earlier so we need to bridge this next human action human to human action combining progressive mind and emotion we spoke of this in the previous slides that builds a good human to human action there will be end of war there will be end of separation there will be end to human suffering if we do this right next collective to collective action this is individual basis the next one is collective basis community integration across national boundaries we are breaking boundaries here we are integrating knowledge across all barriers across all countries so this is one collective to another collective kind of level next building continuous knowledge base and research so like i said nothing i say here is the last word it's just a beginning point building continuous knowledge and base and research will lead to development of more and more better ideas better ways of living working so it is enhancing the human being the alignment of all end goals better when what is alignment of all what does it mean all end goal is to end goal of human living on this planet has been for the betterment of quality of life and quality of earth itself this is what we need to make build in order to have a proper human action which combines all of the rest of them all of the rest of them previous slides you can go back and revisit all the previous slides and then you'll know how this comes to be through progressive human thought emotion 
an action. So all this will be obviously further enhanced in many upcoming chapters. I'm going to spend <laughs> quite a lot of hours trying to explain to you how this is all interrelated and where is a good place to start. With that, I come to what's next. What's next? Okay. These sort of podcasts published on YouTube channel will give you the new core values and basis of understanding to redefine education and knowledge sharing and distribution. What I, what I hope to achieve here, I will come to that later. Just digressing. Okay, going further, I shall continue to put out more podcasts. I shall put more of them. As you know, it requires much more detailed explanation. You have so many questions. So many things are interrelated. How does one affect the other and how do we go about it? It's a whole series which will be coming. And well, we'll see how to go about it. Right? Going further. The core basis of all human living has to shift at fundamental levels. We already explained this. I'll skip this part. Let's go next. Um, what I offer is a, my personal services. I offer two kinds. Life path and career gui guidance counseling for the youth, the young ones, the students, the young professionals as professional mentoring. You can get in touch with me in... Um, on the Facebook page which is shown here and then we can take it from there I've just briefly outlined you can pause and watch this um, my community outreach is I mean I'm hoping with all exercise like this is that experienced professionals academia the people who are just disseminating knowledge the professors the lecturers the doctors the lawyers the, the everyone 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 there's no boundaries to what we can generate from this as well as experienced professionals from everywhere who are producing the work based on things, based on different human sciences, and the youth who are just beginning the process. So I want to bridge this gap between academia, experienced professionals, and youth so that they all come under one platform and work to create a harmonious, true human civilization. True human civilization. Okay? With that, the final word. And this, I will leave it to read it to you uh, with with all that I have spoken. Already it's um, 42 minute presentation. <laughs> My goodness, I was being for 42 minutes. All right, I think I should just post this and leave you to eschew on it um, to see if this makes sense to you. This is a good way to start. Uh, let's start building a community of educated people, experienced academia, experienced professionals, and bridge them with the youth. It's a beautiful tools available online now, these days. There's online, there's Google Teams, there's Facebook, there's MS Teams, there's all kinds of Zoom. There's no limits to what we can create with this stuff. So, but it needs to be reorganized, restructured, Old things have to be destroyed. New things have to be created. And there has to be a basis which is rooted in what we are as individuals first. That's why this has to come as the basis. Right? All right. So 